Welcome to The Marketplace with me, Lukman Haris. On this special edition of The Marketplace, we recap on what we've seen in the Malaysian markets and also the global markets uh, so far this year. And we also discuss the outlook on what to expect moving forward, at least for this year and for the few years that's going to come. And joining me on the show today to discuss just that is Alexander Chia. He's the head of Malaysia Research for RHB Research Institute. Uh, Alexander, welcome to the show. Thank you. Let's start with... Uh, the state of the nation's reserves and also the overall financial standing because the second finance minister, Dato' Sri Johari Abdul Ghani, has recently come out and said that Malaysia uh, needs not fear uh, the current uh, outflow or even the, 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 the less capital inflows coming in, especially from foreign investors into our local market. About a couple of weeks or three weeks back, we see that uh, foreign inflows, foreign fund inflows reached the lowest level it has for the first time this year. So, is the honeymoon over? Are uh, foreign investors uh, shying away from our local market? Uh, not at all. Um, I think that um, you know, Malaysia's economy is in reasonably good shape. Um, I think uh, reserves, uh, foreign reserves have built back up from the uh, low 90s uh, to almost 100 billion uh, US dollars. Um, we've seen uh, flows while they have tapered off in, in recent weeks. I think uh, in terms of equity flows, um, Right now, year to date, we're seeing plus 11 billion ringgit in uh, net equity, uh, foreign equity buying. Uh, this compares to a, a net outflow of about 29.8 billion ringgit for the last three years between 2014 and 2016. So, you know, this year um, has marked a uh, fairly sizable uh, return uh, for foreign investors who, by and large, uh, remain, uh, you know, neutral or somewhat underweight um, uh, equities, Malaysian equities, uh, still, and uh, you know the reasons for that are, are you know, are multiple. I think that, um, you know, there is scope for foreign uh, equity portfolio investors to relook at Malaysia. Uh, you know, given that, uh, you know, equity valuations in the U.S. in particular um, are already trading at peak valuations. So, you know, there are grounds for uh, foreign equity uh, investors to actually relook at emerging markets in general. It's interesting you mentioned the US because, if anything, it has been defined by political uncertainty there with the Donald Trump administration. How do you think this will play off specifically for Malaysia? Well, I think uh, what's uh, critical for the global economy is how, uh, you know, it's whether Donald Trump follows through on his uh, reflationary promises. Now, obviously, uh, you know, expectations have been high, uh, given that uh, the Republican Party controls both houses of Congress. And, uh, but so far, uh, he has yet to deliver uh, anything significant. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it remains to be seen whether uh, his promises can be uh, delivered uh, at, at some point. And he, he has softened on a lot of his promises, uh, just to... to, to, to Quote one example, uh, he promised to actually impose a monumental 35% tariffs uh, on Mexican imports coming into the US, but we've not heard uh, that for the longest of time now. Do you think that's permanent? I think you have to distinguish between Donald Trump, the presidential candidate, and Donald Trump, the president. So I think uh, when, you know, he, he has, uh, after he's elected president, I think there is obviously uh, a, a new dose of reality that sets in and that he, he really needs to... Uh, you know, deliver what he actually can instead of, um, you know, more rhetoric than reality right. when he's uh, a candidate. Right. Talking about Donald Trump is indeed very distracting. Let's come back to the local market of before we, yeah. we return uh, to the international market. Uh, coming back to Second Finance Minister Dato', jo uh, Dato Sri Johari Abdul Ghani's statement uh, that Mal the Malaysian economy has sufficient reserves, it has sufficient buffer, and we are more resilient to withstand any global economic shocks. So he again and again touted that we have sufficient buffer to withstand any economic shocks. We are not as vulnerable anymore as we were last year or the year before. Do you agree? Yes, I think to an extent, uh, Malaysia today, uh, our economy is definitely much more uh, resilient than it was back in the late 90s when we were hit by the Asian financial crisis. Uh, today, uh, you know, reserves uh, have been rebuilt. Uh, our banks are in a much, uh, in much better place where, uh, you know, core equity, uh, uh, tier one uh, capital ratios are at very comfortable levels. Um, you know, you know, bank uh, NPLs um, have retreated to historical low levels. 
uh, we're not seeing significant uh, credit quality issues amongst our banks. I think um, you know, that is testament to the uh, very solid job that uh, Bank Nagara's regulatory division has actually um, done uh, over the course of the last uh, 10 years uh, post the GFC. Uh, and uh, I think that um, you know, Malaysia for now, uh, right now, uh, even from a corporate perspective, uh, you know, corporate leverage is at much more reasonable levels uh, than it was back in the 90s. So yes, I think we are in a much better, uh, you know, the, the economy is in a much better position uh, to withstand, um, you know, a potential downturn uh, that may or may not occur over the course of the next few years. All right, we'll return with uh, Alexander Chia, head of Malaysia Research for RHB Research Institute. Uh, the marketplace will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the marketplace with me, Lukman Haris. Today I'm joined by Alexander Chia, head of Malaysia Research. Uh, he's from uh, RHB Research Institute. Alexander, now before the break, you mentioned uh, the corporate sector. Uh, recently, this year, earlier this year, we saw a slowdown of corporate earnings. But you remain bullish on the corporate corporate earnings uh, moving forward. Why? Okay, generally, uh, despite the pullback in uh, in the market in, a, in the course of the last four to six weeks. Uh, we retain our positive stance on the market potential performance going forward. Uh, we see uh, global growth continuing to trend higher um, and, and we expect this momentum to continue through uh, 2018 and obviously you can see that this has translated into stronger uh, domestic macro data um, from the perspective of exports. For example, for the first five months of the year, uh, exports are up 23.5%. Um, GEP growth, uh, we are now expecting it to, to expand by 4.8%. And uh, this is already uh, behind the consensus average. So really for both exports and economic growth, uh, we see upside risk um, you know, to our forecasts. Now in terms of corporate earnings, in the last three years, uh, corporate Malaysia's earnings have been relatively lacklustre. Uh, mainly because of, of various issues from cost pressures, etc., to, to weak top-line growth. Mm. Uh, but really, coming off a low base in 2016, uh, we do expect um, uh, corporate earnings to stage a meaningful high single-digit rebound this year. Just uh, based on a corp because just based on a low base. Uh, not only from low base, uh, but also from the recovery in commodity prices, uh, from a uh, recovery in uh, plantation output, uh, following the season, the the, the, the um, weather-related issues in 2016, and obviously from uh, a, a rebound in, uh, in, in across the board, really, uh, from uh, more resilient consumer spending, um, you know, uh, uh, more meaningful uh, control of uh, banks, uh, NPLs, and lower credit costs, uh, improved uh, capital market performance uh, that's helping to, to drive uh, bank sector earnings. Speaking about commodity price increases, uh, apart from sparks of increases uh, for oil, crude oil, Generally, the effect has been underwhelming, and I'm talking about the effects of the OPEC cut, two rounds of uh, OPEC cut. The first was a cut, and the second was an extension of the cut. Uh, what more needs to be done to meet their target? Do they need to cut more? Do they need to extend further, or will it never happen anymore? Okay, I think the oil market since uh, mid-2014, um, you know, the, the new kid on the block has actually been the shale oil producers. That's been a game changer for the global oil markets. So right now, um, you know, global oil markets are, you know, are beset with record levels of uh, oil inventory. So oil and storage are at record levels. Now, despite the OPEC cutback uh, in uh, oil production, uh, we are seeing a marginal supply deficit uh, between supply and demand, global supply and global demand. So this marginal supply deficit means that the draw on all inventories is a very slow draw, which means that uh, we are likely to see uh, elevated levels of oil in storage mm. um, you know, going forward. And of course, if you add in uh, you know, the situation in the, in the US where um, you know, rig counts uh, have been increasing, um, the, the, the shale oil producers have been very resourceful. They have managed over the years, despite low oil prices, 
to uh, improve the technological process to bring down the uh, break-even price of uh, production of shale oil. So which means that um, even at, um, you know, where, where Brent crude is trading right now at, at in the low 50s, uh, they, they still manage to, to, to be profitable at, even at these depressed levels of, uh, of oil prices. So will this tug of war ever end once OPEC shows signs of slowing down supply? Of course, obviously to, in, a, uh, in a bit to improve prices, Shale will take this as an opportunity for them to open up business again. So will it ever well, end? Well, I mean, there, there, there clearly there are uh, you know, views in, uh, in, in various segments of the market that uh, low oil is here to stay. But uh, you know, you know, beyond the next you know, 6 to 18 months, um, you know, it's difficult to see how... Uh, you know, it's difficult to have a crystal ball to predict how oil prices can move. There are many factors that can obviously affect um, uh, global oil production, in particular geopolitical events, you know, terrorist attacks, etc., can uh, play a part in, uh, to affect uh, global oil supply. But uh, the sense is right now is that um, with global demand uh, coming back, but at a, at a moderate pace, the supply deficit that we talked about earlier on is, is a marginal deficit, uh, which means that the expectation now is for oil prices to stay capped uh, at um, below $60, $60 a barrel uh, for the foreseeable future. Well, one of the things that it has always been closely tied to oil prices is the ringgit, of course. Uh, but it has seen significant gains recently. It is one of, the, one, one of Asia's best performing currencies. Where do you see the outlook for the ringgit is? And if you can just give a prediction for the end of the year, where will the ringgit be against the greenback? We have a 4.22 uh, end of 2017 target for the ringgit versus the US dollar. Um, I think clearly, uh, you know, the recent, uh, you know, last week's recovery in oil has been positive for the ringgit. Um, you know, with oil recovering 9% in just last week alone, uh, it's important for the ringgit because uh, Malaysia is the only net oil and gas exporter uh, in the ASEAN region, which means that uh, oil uh, as a component of government revenues is a significant, uh, yes. a com it's a significant portion. So which means that um, you know, anything uh, that takes oil higher is positive for government revenues from a fiscal perspective. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Alexander Chia, Head of Malaysia Research for RHD Research Institute, uh, recapping the happenings of the market uh, for the past half year and also for seeing what the outlook will be from everything to all, from all prices to the ringgit. And that's it for this episode of The Marketplace. And it's all your feedback on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Don't forget to download our app as well, as you can see there. And don't forget as well, you can listen to this podcast and listen to this interview on podcast. Simply search Astro Awani or The Marketplace wherever you get your podcasts. Man Harris, thanks for joining us on The Marketplace. Have a good day.